800 a patriot joining us now seth dennison from gdp advisors how are you sir good to see you i'm good thanks for having me back in yeah thanks for coming in want to talk to you about a recent uh post that you had about uh, facebook and twitter possibly <laughs> impacting your health insurance costs no why are they scrutinizing <laughs> that now right i mean it's so so first and foremost this was an investigative report done by npr and i know what's on your mind when i think investigative report the first <laughs> Name that comes to my mind is NPR. NPR. Yes. Right. Actually, you know what? Here's the fun thing about public broadcasting. They do have a lot of resources they to really do good do. reports. They just always skew them. Yes. But as far as the time, they put it in. Yeah. They did. So, you know, we once this report came out, we did our own research and study. And so we all hear about big data, right? Big yeah. data is in the news all the time now. And there are big data collection firms. Their entire job is to track you, to track you, Chris, track me, to understand what we're all about. Because... That is a digital fingerprint of our lives. And so who wants this the most? Well, companies that might be paying claims on me someday right. want to really have a better understanding of what I'm all about so that they can forecast risk, right? So one of the things we talked about last time I was on your show is that insurance companies, they're in it to make money. Shocker, right. n- you know, news, news story here. Uh, and because of that, to make money, they need to make sure they're collecting more than they will ultimately spend. And, and in doing that, we call it the crystal ball factor if I'm an underwriter. If I'm setting the rates for you, I want to know what you're going to cost me in the future. So I have to almost become this fortune teller, right? And so how do I do that? I just get more data. So every time I check in at a burger joint or or maybe binge watch Netflix till four in the morning, I'm maybe not getting sleep or use those cute little emojis oh, saying, less hey, healthy I'm depressed. Behavior, right? I know, right? So all of this is information and aggregated on the masses with millions of data records. Insurance companies can now start to better... Uh, clear up that crystal ball, so to speak, to understand wow. what their cost might be. That's going to be really effective for them, too. Because in the past, they would still base it on um, demographics and then certain mm-hmm. behaviors or whatever. But ho- one of the, the points of the algorithms now of all of the social media sites of Google is the AI effect, too, that says we can predict what you want. That's right. What news stories you want. That's on the, obviously, the real low end, the simple stuff. Hey, you click on a lot of right wing or left wing or things about puppy dogs. So those are the things you see. Well, on a massive scale, as they get better and better, having collected data over decades, Mm -hmm. and not just on you, but everybody, we've determined that it's more likely, even if it's only a fraction, that people from this area that engage in this behavior, that do this, that went to these types of schools, I mean, take it down to that buy this type of shoe, Mm -hmm. are going to be slightly less healthy. Yeah, so in 2010, the United States moved into what's called ICD-10 coding. Uh, Previous to that, we were in ICD-9. That means not. I'm getting into the weeds, and to your listeners, they're not really going to care about that. To a paper pusher analyst like me, I love <laughs> it, right? Because what it does is it tells me more about what conditions you have. So previous to uh, the ICD-10 coding, that's a code for every possible medical condition that's out there. We had roughly— and By the way, it was they were both much better than ICD-8. Well, of ICD course. ICD-8 is just—but uh, ICD-11 is, is going to be huge. I mean, so. It's coming. I'm still on 7. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Switch to Patreon Mobile. Okay. Upgrade. Okay. You got to okay. update that iOS, right? <laughs> uh, but but prior to that, right, there were about 13,000 codes. When we moved to ICD-10, there was closer to 80,000 codes. Not that we added 70,000 more procedures. It's just 70,000 more descriptions for those procedures. And so... And do they do they get more specific then to narrowing in? It's, yeah. it's not as blanket for so each one. So let's, let's say I, I needed a knee scope, right? What the ICD-10 is going to allow me to determine was that knee issue related to twisting it in a basketball game or is it a debilitative issue that gotcha. might ultimately cause more conditions down the road? Okay. So this was all in an effort for insurance companies to better understand and forecast risk, right? So when you start to blend that now with behavioral analysis, understanding how our behaviors and those things that we do can cause me to have a different lifestyle expense ratio, you start to see where the insurance companies can grid things out. So to your point, Doc, previously they would always use demographic data, SIC code of the companies that I worked for, all of the various age, gender, all of that. And the Affordable Care Act really limited their ability to use some of that Mm. information. So they were looking for new ways to do it. Now, what's interesting is when this report came out by uh, by NPR, Insurance companies, as well as companies like LexisNexis and these data collection firms, were quick to say, whoa, 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 we're not using this to set rates, or that's not our policy. Okay, well, it's not your <laughs> policy, but about United Healthcare's, right? right? right. Uh, and so, right, exactly. Um, and so it's really interesting to see what they're ultimately going to do with this information. Another report that came out this last week from NPR, again, NPR's on it today. They are. Um, it said that now the insurance companies are starting to look to companies like 
23 and me, right? So we've all seen these commercials about ancestry.com and I want to oh, understand yeah. where I come from. And all I got to do is swipe this little thing in my mouse, send it in, it's going to tell me that I'm a third Colombian, which is why I really love coffee, right? <laughs> right, right. So now those same companies are selling that data. I could say, okay. So now, oh. now <laughs> even if I didn't personally <laughs> offer up my... Um, biological history that's right you know if i didn't offer it up so is there a history of this that or the other in your family you'll be able to determine because i'm related to my sister who's related to whatever that yes in our family there is a history of something whoa yeah that's scary now the uh what's called the gina act um which was the genetic information non-discrimination act of 2008 Mm -hmm. Right. I'm fun at parties. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this was signed into law by President Bush. And it said that we can't ever use genetic testing to, to impact health insurance rates like that. That, that can't be done. Right. But not nothing about life insurance, long term care, mm. all of these other things. Right. And what insurance companies could do, health insurance companies could do is they could aggregate this data on the masses to find out, do we have a propensity of expense in a certain geographic area? And now that's a way to circumvent the law to say, well, no, 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 we're not saying that Doc is going to pay more because of his history. We're going to say that everybody that lives on Doc Street is. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So this is a way that they can kind of find a loophole in the law and, even, and better and navigate. Even if I'm the only one on the street that actually uses their company, right? It could, could be, be something like that. But but even if it's the genetic testing could not be used, is that does that also cover indirect? For example, somebody in my family. So I happen to be on one of these um, sites where I'm like, okay, let's look up my history, and they have my me as part of this family tree, mm -hmm. and I have not had the genetic testing; they're not using it, but a relative of mine has. Mm -hmm. So they don't use it for them, but they then say, "But Doc is related to them." Could they use it that way? Isn't is it around? Sure, I, everything is on the table for these folks, right? Wow. So this is all data. There's always a digital fingerprint on this stuff, and again, we're just aggregating data, and it's perfectly legal to do. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly legal to try to better understand understand what my risk are it, my risk is and this is listen this is where we get into a co uh, what we call the conflict between capitalism and, and care right mm -hmm. if i'm a shareholder of one of these insurance companies i'm all about the yeah. them doing their due diligence and making sure that they're not issuing policies to people that are going to ultimately cost me as a shareholder my dividend but if i'm a user now all of a sudden i'm in this conflict of saying well, i don't really want them to know everything there is mm -hmm. to know about me and mm -hmm. how honest do i really want to be about these things that's a, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about all this. This is uh, does this help at all um, the users down the road? If if everything's on the table, we get to a point that let's say virtually transparent across the board, mm -hmm. all medical conditions, history, they're able to determine all this stuff. If the formula is insurance companies just have to factor that profit in, mm -hmm. and then it's not as much of a guessing game. Um, doesn't that help us down the road in some ways? It absolutely can. And this is where we oftentimes talk about the fact that data is data can be a great positive, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, when, when my young children were, were in the process, my, when my wife was pregnant, we did undergo some testing just to make sure that everybody's healthy and the baby sure. is growing appropriately and all of that. This is important stuff, right? And, and we in our firm use data as a positive, right? So if we're collecting data on our clients, uh, it's to better help them navigate the system, okay. right? You have a propensity of the potential of this happening. Let's go ahead and perhaps get you into treatment for this or get you to start watching this from a preventative perspective. Data can be powerful. And so I don't want to demonize the, the opportunity to have data done, whether it be genetically or anything else, analyzed. Um, the challenge is, is just be aware. Uh, well, yeah, because I mean, it's yeah. like it's a tool. Tools can be used for good or bad, right? right. Is it kind of like that? I mean, it, I think it's. It's difficult when you're dealing with insurance because if I build an automobile, I can say definitively it costs this much to build the automobile. Mm -hmm. And if I need a profit, I bake that in. I, I charge much, you know, this much more for it. It is. But if you're in the insurance industry, you don't know. So that's the whole thing. If you knew because you had all the information, you could just say, all right, here's what our expenses are mm -hmm. going to be. And we need to make 10% on top or four, whatever it is. That's right. So they come to me. Then it becomes even more of a maintenance plan for me, right? It can be. Or, or Absolutely. could be or, seen that way. Well, the more that we engage on the preventative side of healthcare, statistics show if we are preventative in how we're approaching things, we cost a lot less, both to insurance companies, to the healthcare system and all. But this is, again, going back into, I think, our, our conversation from last time I was on the yeah. show. The health insurance companies are not interested in our health care costs really going down. It's just, it's just about how much they can manage those costs better because mm -hmm. they're finance companies now. 
right? right? So the more that the healthcare system can generate profit off of you and me being unhealthy or being treated, we don't cure things anymore. Mm-hmm. Just treat them for a very long time. And in today's world, to be overly crass, it takes people a long time to die. It does. And they it costs a, a lot of money, yeah. right? And so, you know, when we start to fuse that with an insurance company who says, well, we get to finance that over time then now our motivations start to become somewhat skewed. Previous to the Affordable Care Act, insurance companies wanted to be very careful to make sure they didn't pay out too much in claims. They're all too happy to pay out claims now, but they want to make sure that they're going to get a return on that investment for claims. right? So you're going to be around for a while to pay me a lot of premiums, and I can aggregate those premiums over time. And oh, by the way, Uncle Sam now says, you have to buy my product. And, 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 And the margin for an insurance company is not based on a dollar, it's based on a percentage. So a big part of the Affordable Care Act was what was called this MLR mandate, or managed loss ratio, which said that they could only generate 15% margin. That was the big part of the law that was going to rein in Uncle Insurance Company, right? Wow, that right? worked great. Well, the problem with that is when you have a percentage without a dollar amount, brilliant CFOs say, do I want 15% of a million or 15% of a billion? There it is. Right? So I need you to generate more expense so that I can generate more 15% margin on top mm. of that expense, thus increase my find, cost. Find in the end around. That's always exactly around. Right. So, I mean, bottom line, though, if we are healthier... And we can uh, prevent certain things. It's going to be better for everybody. It's yeah. going to be better for better for your health. It's going to be better for the insurance company. It's going to be better for your pocketbook coming and going, right? That's right. And that's. What, I want to make sure to be clear. I'm not saying don't get genetic testing done. That is, that is, no, 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 ha- that's, no. I would cancel my order. Right? I would cancel my order. So I know, I'm not right? doing that anymore. Uh, this is good. I, I kind of want to know where I came. I know I'm Scott Irish. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, I like scotch and whiskey, but uh, you know, but all of these things, right? I know. But here's the thing. You need to just be aware, be educated, be recognize that your information that you put out there into Twitter sphere or wherever else you're putting this information out there is being watched, right? So hashtag what I learned today. Everything <laughs> I do is being watched by somebody. Yep. If, if it's free, you are the currency. That's it. Yeah. You're right. That's a great point. These are all things that we were not prepared to answer, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. And we're still struggling to get up to speed on it. And it's so interwoven with everything else political. Hopefully in the coming years, though, we'll, we'll be able to work through this. All right. Um, Seth Dennison from GDP Advisors. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and link this all to our social media so people can read that and then find out more about you as well. And what else do, uh, do, do you guys do? So our, our primary focus of, of, of our firm is to help corporations manage their risk better, right? So one of the largest risks that companies face today is the rising cost of healthcare expenses for their employees. Right. So we recognize that the economic principle in healthcare is the same as it is in everything else, right? If I have inflated fuel costs, what I'm going to look what am I going to look at? I'm going to look at the number of units that I'm consuming multiplied by the price. When companies start to think about health insurance for their employees, they don't think about it like the number of healthcare units I'm consuming multiplied by the price. They just think about it as premium, as a transaction. So we oftentimes say that we are asset managers for what companies are spending on their employees for insurance. And so if I can start to manage the number of units consumed multiplied by the price in which they are consumed, just like everything else, I can bring costs down, make them more forecastable and understandable. And that's what we do for our clients. Awesome. Seth Denson from GDP Advisors, and I'll tweet out links so people can uh, look you guys up for this blog, as well as if they are interested in using your service. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Quick break. Back with